All right, so for this next problem, I want us to solve the quadratic equations either by factoring, using the quadratic formula, or by completing the square. So I think I'm going to do all three. Oh gosh, I don't have this all written down, but we're going to see how it goes. So the first thing I want to do is factor. I need to get this in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 18 from both sides. That gives me x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals zero. So I have that a equals 1, b equals negative 3, and c equals negative 18. So in this case, ac is negative 18. So I want to find some negative factors of negative 18 that add up to b, which is negative 3. So negative 18, I'm going to say that's negative 6 times 3 because negative 6 plus 3 equals negative 3, which is our b. So I'm going to use that to rewrite this middle term. So now I have x squared minus 6x plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. And I'm going to factor by grouping. I get that x times x minus 6. So I pull out the greatest common factor. And for this next 3x minus 18, their greatest common factor is a 3. So I have 3x minus 18 equals 0. So I collect my greatest common factors, and I have that x um, plus 3 and x minus 6 are my factors. And if I set each of these equal to 0, x plus 3 equals 0, I'll get that x equals negative 3. If I get x plus uh, minus 6 equals 0, I'll get that x equals negative 6. So I'm going to get the same solutions regardless of how I factor. So whether I solve this by factoring or quadratic formula or completing the square, I'm going to get the same answer. Next, why don't we go ahead and use the quadratic formula? We'll do that in orange. So our quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this will be given to you. So why don't we go ahead and substitute? Negative b is going to be negative negative 3 plus or minus the square root of our b is still negative 3, negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 18. Divided by 2 times a, which is just 1. So I have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. That's a negative 18. 9 plus 4 times 18 is going to be 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times 8 is 32. So I'm going to get 72 for 4 times negative 18. All over 2. So I have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 72 is 81 divided by 2. Well, that means x equals 3 plus or minus 9 over 2. So let's go ahead and solve this. I have x equals 3 minus 9 over 2. Well, 3 minus 9 is negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. Oh, look, that's one of the answers we got before. And then I have x equals 3 plus 9 divided by 2, which is um, going to give me... 12 over 2, which is 6. Again, the answer we would have gotten before. So no matter whether you used factoring or a quadratic formula, we're going to get the exact same answer. So last but not least, let's complete the square. Where we complete the square by adding, let me change colors. We complete the square by adding b plus b over 2 squared to each side. So I have x squared minus 3x equals 18, right? We want to have not only a constant. My b here is negative 3, so I'm going to add negative 3 
divided by 2 squared to both sides. Okay, that gives me x squared minus 3x plus negative 3 divided by 2 squared. That's going to give me a positive 9 fourths. So I have 18 plus 9 fourths. Um, I know that the left side of my equation is going to fully factor to x minus 3 halves. That's one of the rules of completing the square. We have a video on that. You can go review. And I need to write 18 as a fraction uh, with a denominator of 4. That's going to be 72 fourths. So now I have x minus 3 halves squared equals 81 fourths. And I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides to get rid of my exponent. That leaves me with x minus 3 halves is the square root of 81, which is 9, or the square root of 4, which is 2. Let me rewrite that so it looks like 3 halves. So what I, but this is a plus or a minus. So now I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides. And I need to simplify x equals 3 halves minus 9 halves. That gives me a negative 6 halves, which is negative 3. Ding, ding, ding. Same as we had before. And x equals 3 halves plus 9 halves. That gives me 12 over 2, which is 6. Again, the same thing we got before. So no matter how we solve our polynomial, solve our quadratic equation, which is a polynomial, we're going to get the exact same answer. So for this next problem, I'm not going to do every single method, but why don't we first check if we can solve this equation by factoring? Because that's the easiest one. That's my favorite. It's the one I find easiest. But remember, you can use whatever method uh, works best for you. So I have a equals 2, b equals negative 9, and c equals negative 5. So in this case, AC is going to be 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. B equals negative 9. So I need to have some factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 9. Negative 10 could be negative 10 times 1, and negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. So we're in good shape, so we can rewrite this middle term. So now I have 2x squared minus 10x plus x minus 5 equals 0, and we have to factor by grouping. The greatest common factor of 2x squared and negative 10x is going to be a 2x, so I'm left with x minus 5. The greatest common factor of x and negative 5 is a 1, and even though the greatest common factor is a 1, I still have to pull that out. I collect my greatest common factors. And then in order to solve, I need to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve for x. So I subtract 1 from both sides. 2x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. x equals negative 1 half. I add 5 to both sides. x equals 5. 